Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever the time is where you are. I am Chris Sweetleaf and I've started a series called Studio Madness, uh, which hopefully I'm going to get around to doing episode 3 very soon. Um, I've just had a bit of a problem uh, over the past few months. I've uh, managed to break my foot, um, literally broke my heel bone, so I've been off for, well, I've been off work for two months and then I've been off my foot leg whatever for at least uh, a month and a half a couple of months and I'm just kind of getting back into things um, but Studio Madness is basically where I'm uh, showing off a few different bits of gear that I have in and around the studio there's all kind of bits of crazy ass stuff that I'm going to get around to demoing and doing things with um, but I just haven't had time at the minute but what I do have is I've got a couple of videos of me fixing some stuff uh, which I'm going to upload just so that I've got something to upload really. Um, one of the first things was uh, I got this lovely Juno 6 um, some point last year but uh, the pitch bender had snapped off in transit so uh, I've got a video of showing how to fix that uh, and I've also got a video of uh, one of my turntables, my Technics turntables um, decided to go faulty just over a year ago uh, so about six months ago I finally got round to fixing that um, so here's a couple of videos of me fixing some stuff. Um, DJ Sweetleaf and uh, Studio Madness episode 3 coming soon. A Roland a Juno 6. Um, as you can see I had this shipped over from up north and unfortunately the bender kind of snapped off in transit. That is what was kind of left of the bender after it snapped. Um, this is a quick uh, demonstration on how to replace it um, because uh, I thought it might have been a bit of a pain um, hopefully by the looks of things it's not uh, first on the side panel there's two screws unscrew those and then the same on the other side um, over on that side and then basically quite helpfully uh, thank you Roland from 1981-82 um, the entire top surface is hinged and just pulls up and open quite nicely like that all of the lovely circuitry in there look at that absolutely beautiful um, and the fact that it's on wood as well which is uh, is great the whole of the base of this because um, it's a Juno 6 is wood um, this obviously is the the entire bender section um, underneath this um, there are let me just tip this up carefully there are four screws screw holes um, sure if you can see that because it's a bit dark um, I just kind of take my word for it there are there are four screw holes and it's quite apparent that they are the four that hold in the bender section it's this entire section here as you can see is now free um, they are right on the edge of the metal plating so there's kind of one there one there one there and one there but obviously on the, the underside uh, so I'll flip that up and then we can literally with those four freed um, because all the cables are so nicely cable tied um, and stuck together we can literally just kind of lift this entire section up carefully flip it over and there you can see the bottom section of the bender um, the replacement benders themselves let's put that there that's what it looks like um, they are still freely available, uh, well not freely but I mean there are lots of them um, on the internet uh, because I think they're the same for most Junos whether it's a Juno 6, Juno 60, Juno 106 um, also I believe SH101 um, use the same bender and possibly a couple others as well um, so I'm just going to go through quickly uh, and see how swift we can make this All right. Get cracking. What I'm first going to do is just, if you notice, there are two screws on the top of this either side of the bender, um, which I believe, looking at that, is actually holding the, the bender housing in place. So I'm going to unscrew those so that I can remove that and uh, then hopefully get the old plastic bender off and get this one in its place. Okay, so I've got the camera on a tripod now so that we can see exactly what's going on that is uh, the old bender with the that's where the top bit should be let's put that one next to it you can see the way it should be done 
Um, that screw is the uh, retaining screw that's holding it in position, so I literally just unscrewed that. Not quite all the way, but I suppose you could if you wanted to, but leave it in situ. Um, and then literally, it's just a case of just prising it slowly, gently forwards, just like that, and it will just come off the spindle like this. There we go. It's a little bit of just a little bit of force, but that's okay. So that's the old one, and there you go. That's the old one out of the way. Um, these little springs, obviously, see the little spring mounts. Springs need to be the side of um, of that kind of stop holder there. And then I think what's crucial also is note, noting the the slot in the front of uh, this what looks like a flathead screw. Um, obviously, that slot is kind of the the zero point. Um, so as long as that's pointing straight up, then you know that's that's zero for the because the back of this is literally just a variable resistor. Um, that's all that is. Um, so as long as that's set roughly kind of to the middle, then you know that's going to be all good. Um, so we'll take a new bender, thusly, um, and then it's just a case of just pushing it onto the pin in the middle and just making sure that it is pretty much centred. Um, I'm guessing the whole reason, a bit of force just to get that onto the right to the back, um, the whole reason that it is a, uh, a slot screw there is so that you can tweak it so that if it's slightly out of centre then you can make sure that it's, it's centre when you have it in. There we go. Nice little snap to get it into place. Um, always a bit disconcerting, thinks that you've uh, broken something, but no, that is absolutely perfect. Back in one. And if I have a look at that, that's pretty much, I'd say, dead center. I might just give that a tiny little tweak with a flat head. Just to get that dead on. So I'm just going to have that anti-clockwise ever so slightly. All that took was just a tiny little tweak with this. It's absolutely fine. Um, again, the two springs are doing their job. It's being held. Um, I don't know if you can see that from there. A little bit hard to see, but the black plastic sticking out where we are. This bit here um, is hitting the back plate nicely, so that's no problem. Uh, now what we've got to do is just take this little retaining screw off Stick that back in there, um, put it all together, and job should be a good one. I don't think it necessarily matters how far that screw goes, it doesn't necessarily go all the way in, but at least if it's just kind of out of the way of not there's going to be anything under there because there won't. It's literally just open casing under that. Should be plenty of space. Uh, so that can go back through the, uh, the hole. Okay, so we've got the uh, new bender screwed into place. Sat there nicely. Let's do how many of this rounds so we can see. There we go. Nice in there. That just sits nicely down there. Obviously, like I say, it's just the two screws just to hold that back in place. Absolutely fine, nice and springy, back the way it was. Uh, pull the top down. Obviously all I've got to do is just screw that back in from the underside and uh, just put the two side mounting screws in there to hold the top down and then I'll test it. But um, there you go. Uh, it's fairly painless, nice and simple. How to change the plastic bender on a Roland Juno 6.